Hello everyone! Thank you so much for tuning in again to my channel. This week's video is going to be the cat eye video and how to achieve the perfect tail. Now if you guys have watched some of my other videos you know how hard this is. I know this is one of those makeup tricks that I swear to you man it takes practice there's no real rhyme or reason to it there is technique but above everything else have patience because I think that's gonna save everybody a lot of hassle and q-tips and time because don't ever ask a girl why she's late if she's wearing liquid liner with a tail I'll tell you that here are the brands that I have on hand uh, I should say a select few of the ones that I have on hand and I will show you some of the gel liners as well now gel liner for those of you that know is kind of a blend between a pencil and liquid it gives you the ease of putting it on with a pencil but it gives you the precision of putting it on with a liquid liner now what that means is it's kind of a consistency too gooey for pencil but not quite liquid enough for liquid liner and that gives you the ability to kind of work with it and you have to of course put it on with a brush the brush that I typically use and how you'll see me in a lot of my videos using the 210 with Mac as long as it is long and skinny and slanted or angle you're good to go really what you have to focus on with gel liner and achieving a cat eye is making sure the brush is damp and your product in here is a little damp and now what that does is it kind of creates a calligraphy effect and it softens the wax a little bit so that it's easier to draw it on with the liner pencil or the liner brush and this way you're getting a lot smoother of a look and then it, it won't crease or wrinkle or potentially cause an uneven line on your lid now for oily skin I have to double down and that's kind of the unfortunate part of having oily skin oily lids especially as you know four to six hours into a makeup event or anything that I'm out with a full face of makeup on if I don't have a gel liner on and a sealing setting makeup mist I will always get the black line that comes up on my crease and it's not cute so you want to keep that matte effect as much as possible now for dry skin by all means you can just do the gel liner and get away with it but you get longevity if you double down now you don't necessarily have to do gel liner and liquid liner on top of it I usually if I'm in a hurry and I want a precise perfect line I usually will go through with a pencil first and then go back over with liquid liner that way I'm getting the darkened effect and I'm getting right up in the lashes to kind of create that base coat but also it instills the liquid liner to the, the eight hour mark it makes it a lot more wearable for a lot longer of a time and that way you're not getting the flakies or the crusties that tend to happen if you just put on liquid liner just as is especially if you're wearing shadow so moving forward the brushes that I recommend so Max 210 and the Anastasia or Sigma slanted angle brush. Now, the one with Anastasia is number 15 and the one with Sigma is the small angled E65. So, as far as brands go, anything Alme or waterproof as far as pencil liner goes, same thing. You just wanna get a retractable pencil, not necessarily the pencil that you sharpen. That way you're getting more of a gel consistency or a wax consistency of the pencil and it'll stay on a lot longer and it's a lot higher of pigment. Now for gel liners, the four that I have on hand, just on reference of course that you've seen in my videos, the MAC Black Track, the YSL Faux Sills, and this is in the number one deep black Norar. And this is also waterproof or water resistant. They're pretty much water proof as is. It doesn't have to say it on there. Most gel liners are typically waterproof. Now, the Laura Mercier, this is the cream eyeliner in Noir, is in fact waterproof. This stuff goes on probably the best consistency wise because I don't have to get the brush wet. It already kind of gets that wet, um, almost similar to their caviar, almost similar to a 
gel liner or excuse me a, a liquid liner but you don't have to mess with the product that much it kind of is a no-brainer as far as applying gel liner and then finally the Bobbi Brown long wear eyeliner in black ink now this one does claim to be waterproof and it is just as comparable as the Laura Mercier however I do still have to spray down the brush with water to get this to work up a little bit more this reminds me more of the um, Laura Mercier caviar so it's a little bit um, stickier or I should say kind of chalkier in a little way uh, um, a little bit more but I will say it's just as long wearing and it's just as waterproof so on to all of my liquid liners <laughs> now a trick if you're kind of cheap and on a budget and you don't want to spend the $30 for the shocking faux sills, because yes, this one did cost me 30 bucks, Eesh. but they all dry out eventually. And so a good tip is to spray down the tips, of course, with water first and kind of get it on a Kleenex. Make sure that you have them upside down when you store them if you can. That way the product drains into the felt tip. And I have a brush tip as well that's kind of the opposite. And I put water in this as well to mix it up if it gets a little drier. But a lot of times also what I'll do, and this is another neat little trick, if you love the brush tip on, say, a more expensive one, because you can tell how fine-tipped this is, and so it gives an amazing precision. But say, you know, it dries out and you just don't want to spend another 30 bucks, you can always up, you know, the product in it from another cheaper version and still continue to use the same calligraphy pen because it's the precision of the brush or the felt tip liner that gives it that perfect precision you know pointed tip and so it gives you that more control with your movement and with your brush stroke so that you have a better chance of getting it right the first time now a lot of times what I do is so NYC's Super Skinny Marker and the Physician's Formula Liquid Liner Eye Booster. These are both felt tip pens and they dry out fairly quickly. So a lot of times what I'll do is these ones I'll spray down with alcohol, which is another little trick. This will help to thin out the product that's in there and help to loosen it up and get it down into the tip so it's still just as creamy and brand new again. It's the same concept as using the eye drops for your mascara to thin it out and get it fresh again as well. Now another thing that I will say is on brushes like this, now this is the Giordana Fine Liner. I am really not a big fan of this eyeliner applicator for various reasons. Now if you can kind of get a close up of it, you can see how kind of chunky and there's a lot of product on this brush. Now what I tend to do because I love the consistency of the actual liquid in Jordana's eyeliner itself. The liquid is amazing. It's thick, but it still smoothly goes on without any interruptions or no uh, harsh little bumps or lines, or it really does give a good even flow when you go to apply the liner. But I will cheat a little bit and take my favorite applicator and just remove some of the excess and that way I get the applicator that I want with the product that I want. So I don't know if Jordana and YSL can come together and make a baby, but their formula for their liquid liner together would be perfect. Now, unfortunately in the cosmetic world that doesn't always happen, so we have to kind of make do with what is. Now the other brush liquid liner that I really like is the Milani iTech Perfection. Now this one's the same thing, you know, it's a cheaper one so it will dry out a lot faster, but the handle on it is really cool. And you see these at Sephora as well, and I love that you can just grab it and rest it on the jaw and you get that more controlled application with this kind of brush. But as always, if it does dry out, alcohol or water or of course using a fresh one with the same applicator. Now finally, the Femme Couture Liquid Eyeliner. I tend to not like the brush applicators, but I really do love this one because not only is it a shorter handle than most brushes are, so you get more control with your application, but the felt, like the finest little hair fibers on the actual um, applicator brush itself 
go on a lot more precisely than most felt tips. So I will continue to use these, even though these are at Sally's for like five or six bucks. This is still a good contender as far as wood liner goes. Now, some other great brands are, you know, with BH Cosmetics and Benefit has a fantastic liquid liner applicator pencil. I really do like their new liquid liner. It's a slanted, so it gives you that cut that you want as far as liquid goes. It isn't the best at staying for a long time. It actually does dry out fairly quickly. But again, it's all in the application and it's all in the actual consistency of the product. So when you're shopping for a good liquid liner, whether it's drugstore or retail, always keep in mind, please, 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 that you could have a great liquid liner application and a crappy product. The actual liner itself is crappy. So always take those two things into consideration anytime that you're trying to find a good liquid liner because you really do wanna make sure that not only do you get sold on the application of it with the actual product that's inside as well because I can't tell you how many times I've gotten home and tried a liquid liner and thought that the brush application looked fantastic and then I go to actually work with the product and it doesn't blend it doesn't you know gradually build and it's choppy and chunky and flaky and it's not cute or the other way around I have a fantastic fluid beautiful stark black liquid in the bottle but the application sucks the applicator on the liquid liner itself is lame so anyway thank you guys so so much for watching i hope you enjoy and any questions or comments always leave in the comment section below subscribe because you know you won't do and thank you thank you thank you always have a good one guys so the first step is going to be to take the Longwear gel eyeliner in black ink with bobby brown and the mac 210 eyeliner brush and spray down just a little bit with water to get damp and take your ring finger and retract the skin and we're working just along the lash line and this is just to set the base and to really coat the lashes so that you don't see any skin between the lash line and your liner you want to focus more on depositing product and smoothing out the gel so that it is not thick and making sure to work from the outside in and the inside out corners. This part doesn't necessarily have to be symmetrical, but as you notice, I'm working in short motions and with control, which takes a lot of patience. So just be aware. Moving right into my Faux Sills Shocking Eyeliner with YSL, I then go in and precisely trim the corners and make sure that I am using that tight, tight skin with my ring finger to get the perfect precise line. Now with the tail, and this is a little tricky, you will see I added in another clip from a previous video to show you a closer up version of the tail but you really wanna start from the outside in and make sure again with stro short strokes, you're really being careful on precisely blending the eyeliner into itself so that the line comes out even and symmetrical on both sides. So for the tail of the cat eye, I'm going to pick a point and work from the outside in and make two points of a triangle and fill them in accordingly. So you wanna start from the base of the liner and then bridge the connection and make the triangle with the top outer part of the liner too. And then fill in that cat eye so that it is just as thick as you want and make sure you're bridging the line so that there isn't any crinkles or uneven marks in the eyeliner. <laughs> 